Hello, Minders. Welcome to the Mind of Watercolor. I am here today at many of your requests with Marty Owings. Uh, we're doing a kickoff for 2021, and I uh, thought it'd be great to just have a session here with Marty and talk about sketching. And you know, a couple of weeks ago, the video I put out, we talked about motivation. Uh, so we're going to talk about that and how that plays into sketching. We're going to talk about uh, my motivations, Marty's motivations, and we're coming at it from slightly different angles. And we're going to talk about the tools and the materials, but the overall arching theme here is going to be sketchbooks and sketching. There are just all kinds of approaches, and we're going to hopefully bust a few preconceptions out there or maybe excite you and get you uh, excited again about the, the lowly little sketchbook. Marty and I have been friends since my channel was almost brand new. Um, I found his channel and he was doing a review. I think, Marty, I think it was a Peshad box, to be honest with you. And I said, uh, this dude, it looks like somebody might be fun to know. So I, I left a, a comment and you got back to me. And before I knew it, we were like commenting on each other's videos all the time. Yes. And uh, just kind of kindred spirits. And uh, about three years ago, we started doing, or we did, I haven't done a lot of them, but we did some some live uh, episodes where we batted some ideas back and forth about art materials, and people love those. And uh, we kind of had to get away from that a little bit. I know at one point you changed uh, jobs, yes, and kind of got out of YouTube for a little while. And mm -hmm. uh, this year we did uh, the episode with James Gurney. Totally your, totally your Baby was a great, great episode. A lot of people like that. And people have been saying, bring back Marty and Steve. So <laughs> welcome back, Marty. <laughs> well, thank you, Steve. Uh, it's good to be back with you. But, you know, it's just like an old friend. You can just <laughs> pick up a conversation wherever you left it off. You know what I mean? That's what we're, that's how we, I, I believe we, if we'd have known each other as kids, we'd still be friends. You know, that's how. Sure. That's how it is, you know, we met right away, we had a connection. It wasn't just art, it was a lot of other things in life in general too. So, you know, just a, a faith in, you know, a higher power and the, the whole, you know, connection that way and just family and those kinds of things. And, and you know, we, 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 we've got enough differences to keep it interesting, you know, but at the same time, we share so much in common that it's, uh, it, it makes for a, a, a probably a really good, healthy, you know, friendship. So Absolutely. I always appreciate talking to you and being with yeah. you. So. Yeah, it's, it's we should. Great. We do a lot of talking outside of the. We do uh, outside of it. I mean, we'll pick up the phone and you know, Steve will call, or I'll call Steve, or we'll text, and uh, it could be an hour and a half. It, it, it sometimes I look down, and I go, oh, geez, I. I'm sorry, Steve, I kept you on the phone that long. And you say, well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know it was that long. You know, so it's, it's just, probably more me than it is you. <laughs> well, it's, it's a good mutual situation. So yeah, I'm yeah. glad to be with you. And I, I've had the same feedback from a lot of the viewers on, you know, my channel supporters that, you know, you and Steve just, you guys just have to get, keep, keep this up and keep getting together and keep talking about art and stuff because we love we love it to yeah, be a yeah. part of your conversations, I guess. Sure. Well, uh, and one of the things that I really wanted to kind of tap into in this episode was uh, we come at things from slightly different angles. Um, I've been a professional artist for, oh, 35 years. And um, sketchbooking was, for me, a tool to get to a finished product. And it was very commercial. I mean, I did sketch for fun, but quite honestly, most of the time I was working out, I was using it like scratch paper for a math problem, you know, I was working out stuff uh, or I was practicing and researching something that I was going to be doing commercially. And I'm very interested now, I'm more in the same boat as you as I, I do these YouTube videos and that's uh, my full-time occupation now. But when I sketch, I do it for me and to share, you know, what I'm learning. So, but this has been more or less uh, your approach. And uh, I was initially, uh, when we met and, you know, I learned more about you, you 
uh, we're managing a sketching group. So you've been actively involved in a sketching group uh, that meets weekly, something that I've never done. So I want you to talk about that. How did that start? Uh, what what have you seen there? What what does it do for the people there? Uh, what are the different approaches? Anything you want to talk about on that? And I'll ask you some questions as we as we go. Sure. Yeah, I'm happy to share whatever I can about that. That uh, well, I I think mainly started. Uh, be, you know, I started looking around for groups where I could go and be with others who were like minded in sketching as well. So that's kind of how it started for me, and it's probably been a it's probably been a decade now or so. And, you know, sketching really has taken off in the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years, you know, as a, as its own art form, you, you know, but, but as you said, and I'll get to the sketching group here in a second, but as you said, you had used it as a, as basically a tool, like a scratch pad for math problems was your, your analogy. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's how I always thought of a sketchbook in general, because, you know, in college, I, took some art classes. You know, I wasn't an art major. I didn't do it as a profession. As a matter of fact, I, I'm in technology, a computer programmer. So I did, you know, it's like left side, right side of the brain all the time like that. So anyway, but long story short, um, I wanted to, you know, look at the process, what artists did back in the day. And a lot of them would start with a sketchbook and then they would do a rough pencil or charcoal sketch in a mm -hmm. book. And that was always going to be throwaway work. That was never meant as fine art. It was a study to advance your uh, craft, maybe into a, a watercolor study. And then from a watercolor study, you'd maybe create an oil study. And from that oil study, then you'd advance to the finished work. You know, mm -hmm. this is kind of a traditional painter's approach, maybe in the, uh, you know, 1800s, late, you know, early 20th century, stuff like that. You know, but, yeah. but as things evolved, the art form of watercolor painting became its own, you know, sort of art form. And, you know, you think about it, Steve, it's always been an ephemeral, uh, you know, form, watercolor. It was never meant to last 200 years. It wasn't the oil painting of its day. It was, right. you basically did a study and you tossed it in a drawer. And if no one ever saw it, you didn't care. Right. But now there's, there, now, now it's its own. And I believe that as we kind of uh, get into, to the, uh, I don't know if there's a word for it, but 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 the hyper local usage of these materials, they become their own art form. So the sketch exactly. becomes its own art form. The sketch exactly what I wanted to talk about is is the yeah. art form of the sketchbook itself, rather than just the tool to get to a finished piece of artwork, another finished piece of artwork. Right, and that's what's so exciting. So I. I said, well, there's got to be other people sketching from life out there, you know, and I went to the St. Paul Art Academy and started sketching with Jim Robinson and doing live model sketching, you know, and then you just, you basically, the easiest thing to do is if you don't want to bring a hundred pieces of paper, you bring a sketchbook and you just sit and there's a live model and you get a one minute, two minute, five minute, and then a 20 minute pose. And you have to hone your skill because Man, I don't know if you've ever tried it, but people, you, you think one minute is is a long time. It's not a very long time to try to capture somebody, you know, and so my, yeah. you get better and better at sketching live, uh, you know, from life, I guess, is, is right. the, what Gurney would say. So, um, and just I referenced James Gurney there for a second, because he's really good at sketching from life. So I'll go out. Uh, so I wanted to go out, find a group that was like-minded. And the first thing that came up when I searched for it was the urban sketchers. And so I kind of joined up with the Urban Sketchers group in, in Minneapolis, uh, where I live in Minnesota. Minneapolis is the big city. So I go and, and join that group. And, and I liked it a lot, but they have some rules. And one of the rules is you have to sketch from life all the time. Like you can't, you can't get, take a reference picture, go home, sketch that, and then post it. You know, you have, mm -hmm. there's a rule you have to have been there and, you know, sketching from life. And a lot of times I, I was challenged by that early on, you know, it's like, well, I, you know, I, I, I got the picture. I'm, I'm sketching it out. Doesn't look great. Uh, I'd really like to take a picture of it and work on it at home. 
you know, but, but that's not the point. It's not a finished work. It's just a quick sketch. So once you're willing to accept that, that a sketchbook is ephemeral, it's throwaway, no one cares, you know, and it pushes your comfort zone. Right. It does. And so then I, I thought, well, uh, I like the Urban Sketchers. It's a good group. I don't really like that rule, so I'll go and look for another group. And there happen to be the Twin Cities uh, Metro Sketchers, they call them. And so that group is just a group that doesn't have a lot of rules. We just go out like once a month. You might go to a restaurant, a cafe, some outdoor venue. Uh, a couple of times we went to the cemetery, a local cemetery. We go to, uh, you know, always asking for permission first. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been to museums, we've been to, you know, some uh, different places like that, you know, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of fun places in Minneapolis, the Swedish Institute, places like that, where you can just, you get permission, they'll let you sketch the exhibits or whatever. The Bell Museum is another big one. Um, so, you know, joining that group was a lot of fun. And then the people that were running the group said, hey, look, we're, we're getting, uh, we're getting to the point where we don't want to run it anymore. Would you would you take it over? And I said, well, uh, I've only been sketching with you guys for about a year and a half, but you know, and I, I don't know all the members and all this stuff. But anyway, I said, I do it if a buddy of mine helped out and his name is Larry Ehrlich. And so he said, yeah, I'll help. And so we ran that group for about a year until then we turned it over to somebody else. And we still attend when there's events and things. But, but in the meantime, in between all that, in between Urban Sketchers and the Metro Sketchers group, Larry and I decided to form our own group called the St. Paul Underground Artists League. And ah. basically it was just an excuse for Larry and I to go out and drink coffee once a week and sketch whatever <laughs> we could find in the cafe. But yeah. it, it's grown now to be about 225 members wow. uh, from all over the place, really. It's not St. Paul, it's like all over the world, Texas, you know, uh, Europe, China. Um, there's some people yeah. in there from, um, from all different continents. So, uh, but, what, but what we do now is, we, well, obviously because of the pandemic, we have to get together um, online. So we have once a week, we Zoom, and I'm sure you'll, we can get into that if you're interested, but we, we have a Zoom meeting for four hours and we just sketch virtually together. Sometimes cool. uh, we, we just uh, sketch and chat. Um, sometimes we talk about art, life, you know, how was your week, you know, but it's a, it's a reason to sit down and intentionally sketch every week. And it forces you if you haven't if your week was busy or you have another job and you didn't sit down to sketch that week, you are now permitting yourself to sit down and sketch for a few hours. And, and we, we we might do prompts, uh, you know, like uh, you know, take like a vase or a still life or a picture of a landscape and, mm -hmm. and share that and say let's all try that. And then at the end we share our work, um, and then we post it on the Facebook page for the group and. Uh, uh, gets a lot of good feedback so it's a good good encouraging open place to do that i'm not, i'm in no way no way I, i'm not trying to promote it i'm just saying it's a yeah. fun it's a way to stay engaged no this is great I, I and i really love hearing about this because uh you know just to kind of put it in another way my sketchbooking over my career was just uh in support of the next project you know it was like either research to hone my skills or it was, you know, just uh, working out the things I needed to do for uh, my portfolio or for the piece that's due next week, that kind of a thing. And um, I've learned since starting this YouTube channel and, you know, a lot of people out there are gonna go, well, yeah, uh, there's so much more to sketching and sketchbooking than that. That's just, you know, and I'm discovering that and I'm wanting to discover more. Um, and it's great, to, I'd love to hear if you have any uh, anecdotes about why the people in your group sketch, you know, what are they thinking about? And it's probably as varied as the number of people there. Mm -hmm. You know, they just love putting pencil or pen down to paper or are they working on a particular project or do they just look for something to do while they're mainly interested in the socialization? I mean, there's so many approaches. So what have you seen in your uh, sketchbook group uh, well, experience? I guess, yeah, I've, I've seen all of those things in the sketch, in, in the various groups. Um, like with the urban sketchers, 
um, there's some very, very serious sketchers there. I mean, these are people who are like architects by day and urban sketchers at, you know, at night when they get off work and they're, they're continuing to develop and hone their artistic skills because those, you know, some people got into architecture because they, they, they liked it as an art form. And so much of it has been um, co-opted by computers. You know, people use uh, computer-aided drafting and design tools now to do their work as an architect. They don't get in a sketchbook hardly anymore um, professionally and do that work. You know, there's no big hand, hand-drawn, hand like hand-inked vellum blueprints. That doesn't exist. You just run it off on the printer. You know, it's like technology is kind of ripped a little bit of the art away from from that kind of thing. So there's very serious people that come to to explore the artistic end of their profession. There are others that do it for the social reasons to ex, you know explore uh, what it means to you know get together in a group and and experience art together at the same time. Uh, but there's also just um, practitioners I'd call them that that want to uh, do, do that thing 10,000 times to get better. Oh yeah. You know, to, yeah. To be better today than I was yesterday. And art is a, a great way to mark your progress in that, in, in some kind of endeavor like that. Right. Because art, yeah. you can visibly see the difference when you sketched five years ago to now, if you, if you practice at it. And that's a, that can be a, enough of an end, uh, to the means right there. I mean, it doesn't even have to be because then you're going to do something else with it. You might, but it can just be the joy of seeing that skill grow, like improving a golf score, I guess. Well, and I, and I suppose there's people that do that. There are others like, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they'd be the most quiet person at the sketching group and they're in, you know, we, we, I, I can especially recall the times we've been to, um, places like uh, the, the local, there's a big, like, you remember when libraries weren't just libraries, but they were edifices to the, the glorification of knowledge, oh, yeah. pillars, yeah. marble, like beautiful wood, mahogany, you know, book, like we, we got a place here called the George Latimer Library in downtown St. Paul. We'll go down there and sketch because it's, it's classic, you know, it's, it's beautifully, the building itself is a work of art, you know, and sure. the hallways and the brass and the elevator, sure. everything's beautiful. And we'll go down there and sketch. And I can very clearly recall like these quiet people in the corner, you know, just sitting on the floor sketching. And, you know, after when we get together, we kind of all show our work and just being blown away uh, by the level of uh, representational detail in the work and how well they got like compound angles and, you know, watercolor, whether it was a loose painting or a, a very, you know, tightly uh, rendered piece, you look at that and you're just, uh, I, I'm just always blown away by the talent. And I'll get talking to somebody because that's my nature. I want to know, you know, I want to yeah. explore what they're doing. And they'll say things to me like, you know, I, I, I went to school for art. I have an MFA, you know, Master of Fine Arts. I, I, I started out in the profession, but my life took me elsewhere. I had children or had to get a job to pay bills or whatever and went and did that and and wanted to get back to this and 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 bring me back to my roots and I haven't picked up a pencil or a brush in in 15 or 20 years I knew a retired guy named Jim who was a marketing executive who loved you know sketching and being out with his daughter and and the rest of our group and and he was a great guy and we'd have long conversations about why art was important to him and why he, why he had let it go for so many years. That's why when you say something like, I, you know, I did this, this is my profession. This is what I was driven to do. I both admire that. And, and I'm in awe of it at the same time. Hey, one, Steve, um, I, if I have to do art for a living, I feel like somehow that robs me of the joy of it. Now, don't ask me why I feel that way, but I just feel like if some client is demanding, I draw a picture for them, it's not the same as it doesn't quite come from my heart. You know, yeah. it's like, I, it's like when people ask me to, to, to uh, do a portrait of their kids or pets, I'm always uh, mortified by, uh, you know, the, the obligation, the weight yeah. of the responsibility, the, the I'm going to hand them this picture and it's going to look like, uh, 
no one in their family. And it's going well, to yeah. all that pressure you put on yourself. And it's just like hard to do that. And yet, and still, I admire what you did as a profession because you didn't go and get another job to pay the bills. You stayed in the thing that you loved to mm -hmm. pay your bills. And so many people, when they struggle as an artist, they bail. They yeah. bail because they don't think they can make it as an artist. And Well, you, you have to look for your motivation, and it's not always where you think you might find it. Um, I, you know, I know exactly what you're talking about when, when you say doing something for hire. As a matter of fact, uh, right after uh, we were married, my wife and I, uh, the last thing I thought I wanted to do is be a, a commercial artist. I went into retail and, and got some, got into some managerial programs because what I thought I wanted to do was um, have my own gallery maybe school be able to sell uh my own work prints other artists work that kind of a thing so i thought may, maybe some retail i mean i didn't know what i didn't know you know it was kind of ridiculous of course. and i quickly realized that that didn't work what i really needed what i really should have done is get some business uh training in school and i ended up uh, going commercial art and it wasn't as bad as I thought um, where I found my motivation because believe me I did tons and tons of work that I didn't want to do you know tons of art uh, you know uh, I do dumpsters at one point um, <laughs> anything that pays the bills right puts food on the table yeah technical illustration of dumpsters and uh, lots of them for a catalog so you know, those kind of things come along and the fun ones come along too. I uh, did a lot of design, uh, but what I really found motivation in was the process. You know, uh, each do skill learned, each each one I could add to the bundle that I already had, the experience, I uh, mm -hmm. found those, those skills growing. So that turned out to be enough motivation regardless of, of what I was doing. Did you... But, Oh, I was just going to ask when you were when you were trying to figure that out, there had to be like an inflection point, like a, a moment of epiphany in your life where you decided, hey, uh, this isn't exactly, um, you know, I don't really want to work in retail or maybe business ain't all it's cracked up to be. And now I, I really enjoy doing art. But whatever, whatever happened to you at that moment, do you remember when it was or how what led you to that decision? Um, well, necessity, number one, um, it's like I, I hated retail. So that was, I thought commercial art can't be worse than this. Right. So there was that. Um, and then, you know, I got to know a little bit more about it. Uh, half of fear is usually ignorance. So mm -hmm. I got to learn more about the different vocations. And there's lots of ways to earn a living with commercial art. Um, I didn't earn it primarily with illustration. That was probably 20% of my business. The other 80% was design, graphic design. Mm -hmm. So, and I found out that I enjoyed that more than I ever thought I would. So I also, uh, right around 1988, 89, um, it started going from a physical, uh, genre to a digital one. Uh, right. The Mac was, which came out in 84, um, and then the programs progressed. I mean, I started with Photoshop 1.0. Right. I was there at the beginning. And yeah. those those programs really, really excited me. There were a lot of artists out there that just couldn't stand them. But for some reason, I just saw the possibilities. So that was another you gravitated motivation. to the technology. Yeah, you yeah. the same way I did in programming, you know, like uh, I started out, I, I told you this, but when I got out of the army, I, I went to school for drafting. I basically wanted to be a drafter because oh, yeah. my yeah. parents were both my parents were artists. Like my dad was a, a commercial artist, much like you worked for corporate America, you know, Ludwig drums and all this stuff. Um, and my mom was, um, was an artist as well, I used to paint and draw and and things like that, but she, you know, supplemented her income with like waitress jobs and things, you know what I mean? It was sure. a struggle and growing up like that, I, I 
didn't think I wanted to be an artist because, you know, it's like hard to make a living to doing that. But, yeah. but I figured, well, you know, I've got this talent because I grew up around these people. Well, and I wouldn't even call it talent, just some yeah. practice. Yeah. Uh, from growing up around these people, you know, I'll try to be a drafter. And as soon as I got into school, I realized that um, I wasn't going to be using a pencil very much as, as I was a mouse, you know, and yeah. I'm going to be doing a lot of, you know, design and computer aided drafting. And then when I got into that, I just, I said, well, I, I can, I can take this up a level if I can program this CAD system to do what I want it to do, you know, and extend the application to mm -hmm. be more useful. So anyway, you know, like you, I embrace technology. Like, you know, you grow up with Star Trek, you're yeah. like, it's all going to be real someday anyway, so I might <laughs> yeah. as well get on board. But um, Well, yeah, and I saw a lot of artists that just totally watched their careers die. Yeah, because same with they the draft. Wouldn't yeah, because yeah. they wouldn't embrace it. And they wouldn't, yes, exactly. you know, it's like they resisted to the last, the bitter end and yes. they became, you know, they became obsolete right along with the way they preferred to do their art. Thankfully, right. you know, it wasn't, I didn't look at it as a necessity. I looked at it as an opportunity and it was just fun, you know, and I, you know, I guess the thing I'm saying overall to, to kind of bring it back around is, uh, I just, it, there wasn't necessarily one point, but it was just discovery. Seriously. Just discovering that this is what I needed to be doing. And it was a struggle. It was a struggle for years before it started to be successful. So, you know, and I guess to, to pull it back to the sketchbook theme, um, what I was missing uh, was the, trading the necessity of a sketchbook for the joy of it because throughout yeah. my career that wasn't really the fun thing it was like you know a necessary stepping stone right. and really discovering the joy of sketchbooking is <laughs> been something that it's I mean neat. I knew there I, I, I actually did start uh, doing sketchbook for practice and fun probably 15 years ago Okay, but I'm just each year goes by, I gain more of that appreciation and joy. And hey, wait, you know, you put it perfectly. This is an art form all by itself. I think our so. episode yeah. with James Gurney uh, proved that, if nothing else did. Yeah, that's right. There's a so. lot of people that have leveled up in ways that you are <coughs> almost nearly unimaginable. You know, if you think about where where sketchbooking maybe was in the mid 20th or late 20th century to where it is now i mean there's yeah. there's there's genres of sketchbooking like uh you know uh, pam Lure, my friend does like uh nature journaling and you know like that kind of sketching and there's architectural renderings that are brilliant if you're an instagram uh person you you know just by going out there and sampling the various artists at work that um you I mean, what what is being done right now in the small format sketchbook is is extraordinary and brilliant. And I think, I mean, I don't think it's a stretch to say this. I was just predicting the future for our art group the other uh, night, you know, the best I could. But I said in my post that when they search the archives in the 22nd or 23rd century for, you know, the digital, the vast digital wasteland, um, they're going to come across these nuggets, these places where people, um, you know, posted this brilliant art, and and you know wherever it is in the, in the physical or digital sense, um, I think it'll be looked at as as, as our generation, some of our generation's finest creation, you know, in terms of, uh, just pure artistic expression, and I think when you when you think about how a oil painting in the traditional sense. Um, when you look at it, you can understand that you you know who the ar artist is instantly. Like when you look at an Edward Hopper painting, you know it's Edward Hopper. You know when you, you know you pick any famous artist, you know P Picasso, Van Gogh, you know their art, um, uh, and it and it makes them unique. When you open up a Steve Mitchell sketchbook, you you know instantly it's Steve Mitchell's work. I mean, I I, I look at your work, I watch your videos. I'm just a, a uh, just like any other fan uh, follower of yours, I I enjoy your work. I let me give you an example that really excited me recently. Like I I called you. I was watching a couple of your videos. 
are trying to catch up a little bit. And you did this one video where you just, where you, and I, I'm taking, I know I'm getting on, a, on an off ramp and you don't want to talk about yourself too much, but let me, let me go through this. You did this video and I recommend people go look at it because it has some important moments in it that for an artist, you, you need to take in and really let into your soul. And here it is. You basically take paint, you throw it on a piece of paper and you go, now I'm going to render something out of this paint that just went everywhere. And, uh, and so I watched you create this landscape and it's got the, 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 the very uh, iconic, I'll call it Steve Mitchell uh, uh, trademark where, the, where the, the, the paint just goes down the page. And that's just, you know, could be a cast shadow, could right. be ripples in the water, could be anything <laughs> you make it. But what was beautiful and what, what's important about that is to take a step back from the serious way in which you try to hold yourself to some standard and just have fun for the fun of it, for the sake exactly. of it, yep. throw the paint down and make it into whatever you want. It doesn't yes. matter. It's just going to be fun. It's going to fill your heart and mind and hands with joy and, uh, you know, whatever, uh, whatever creation comes out of that is going to be uh, done from, from a place of a happiness. And but I just found that video. Beautiful. But you'll learn something in the process. You learn something. And even if you learn it by mistake, mm -hmm. you still learn it because you were in there doing it. And you, I mean, you know, you, the, the painting you created and people, you should post a link to this video when we're done here, but the, the, the work you created from that was, was uh, phenomenal. I oh, enjoyed thank it. you. Yeah, I was, but that's what it's like, you know, it, it doesn't well, have it, to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Know? It, you know, it, it, it was a process born out of boredom, frankly, <laughs> you know, okay. Okay. having, having done like 10 hours worth of, of design and layout for a catalog and saying, you know, sheesh, I just want to paint, you know, but I'm too burned out right now to sit down and draw out something meticulously and paint that. Right. Um, and I also, you know, I want to push the limits of what watercolor will do. So what do you do? Well, you just start slinging it around and you start oh, saying oh. watercolor, show me what you got, you know? And then you say, it's like a jam session with a, another musician. You know, you say, well, okay, if you're going to do that, I'm going to do this. And oh, well, that's great what you did there. So if you're going to do that, I'm going to do this. It's a, it's a collaboration. And that's where the, the whole name of my channel came from. But in the process, the it's water. like I, I, I was learning what watercolor could do, what I could do with it. And it, it just became exciting. And that became you know, something that I explored in sketchbooks as well. So it's just. Well, you, you made me think that your channel could be called the mind and soul of watercolor as well, well because really it, 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 you can tell it comes from the heart. Like I could tell when you were doing it, you were having fun. Like you were, you were expressing yourself and you were sharing something that's, you know, fairly unique in the world. I mean, remember, I, and I, you know, I don't want to be too nostalgic because we have a lot of viewers, a lot of different ages, but um, Steve, I don't know if you remember this, but when you and I were in our 20s and 30s, you'd have to go to a library, search all day to get some kind of minute nugget of artistic secrecy that you could apply to your yeah. work. And now I just search, I just use a Google search term and the algorithm man pops up, you know, it yeah. searches the DB and I'm, you know, I'm like, Hey, look at somebody did a video on how to unlock that secret. Now I know exactly. how to on a wall, you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's unbelievable how, yeah. how utilitarian and um, expedient it is. But I think sometimes you can get lost in the, in the expediency of it. Sometimes, yes. you know, I'm not an old timer and I'll like, uh, like, uh, long for the olden days when you had to stone tablet and chisel. I'm happy for computers. I'm great. I'm grateful for the technology, but I think there's a resurgence in wanting to do more analog work, even among digital artists, because very much. Yeah. You want, once you learn the discipline and process of analog art, you can translate it digitally, but yep. doing it digitally 
is not as easy a translation back to, um, and that's just my opinion, but it doesn't it's seem true. Like it's, it's, it's as easy. It's true. It was true in design too. Um, when I went through that transition and I got to see a lot of uh, graphic designers that came along later uh, that designed directly and they didn't get out that pencil and paper very often, you know, and it's, right. it's, uh, there were, there were some, some definite drawbacks to not doing that and not being able to do that. Right. But uh, you're right too. There's, there's just a fascination now. I think we've gone so far, you know, we went uh, through the nineties, through the early nineties, <clears throat> excuse me, illustration went through a, a heavy airbrush phase where every airbrush was like super popular. Everybody, everybody wanted to be Patrick, maybe yeah. whatever that yeah. guy, you remember everybody, him? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, another one was Mark Fredrickson. I don't know if you're Mark, familiar with yes. Mark Fredrickson, the illustrator. Another one is Drew Blair, Drew Blair. Uh, and he had, Drew Blair had uh, like all these airbrush um workshops and I even went to one and uh, he was doing like Star Trek posters and stuff and but uh, well even Drew Struzan the movie poster illustrator used airbrush as an underpainting yeah. Drew Blair the only difference there was he would do the whole thing in airbrush so all of that <laughs> quickly uh, right around 90 late 90s that started kind of being eclipsed with yeah. digital because then you had wacom tablets and you right. didn't need it and by by the early 2000s what we were doing with airbrush you could very easily do on photoshop right you know and so and then that just took off right. you know and then yeah. everything became digital and it's That's like great. digital 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 and now you know you have new generations of artists coming along saying I'm kind of tired of that. You know, what was it like before? Let's let's yeah, try oil the, again. Let's try yeah. acrylic again. Let's try colored pencil or yeah, watercolor sure. again. So what goes around comes around. I, I love that idea of, you know, I, I love how technology can change art. Yeah. You know, like, uh, like oil paints got better over the years and watercolors have become, you know, a lot more light fast and durable and, you know, they can last. 50 60 100 years in the right yeah. light you know st stuff like that so technology it seems to influence us along the way and you know i mean i know you and i are more like uh you know, i gravitate gravitate hard towards illustration you know rather than um i don't know fine art paintings mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it you know that, that whole idea of being illustrate uh, of illustrators and illustrating it as a story telling vehicle is what mm -hmm. appeals to me. You know, I try to tell a story in a drawing or a painting or a portrait, you know, whatever landscape it is. But what I wanted to show you something quick that inspired me from your sure. Uh, from so you took that you 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 did that video and I watched it a couple of times and you just put the paint on there and let let it let it happen. And I thought to myself, well, what's one way I could challenge myself similar to that? And I was sitting one night and we were doing, uh, I was doing a little painting and I had a lot of paint left over in the, uh, you know, in the dish. You ever have that? You don't want to clean it out. You're just like, yeah. dang, I wish I should. So I just took the paint and I started swatching out these squares, right? And here's, yeah. here's, here's the plan, right? Is I'll take these squares, Steve, and I will like draw something in the square or paint something in the square, you know? Cool. And, every you know and i did i you know i did like half a dozen of them or so but but check Great this idea. out Steve. like you got sky right there you could yeah. do like you know but i like the possibility of a square you know like i this one looked a lot like a sunset so i just stuck a white circle in but you know what i mean just yes. let one square at a time take you where you want and who cares where this stuff ends up steve no one yeah. cares i don't care i'm not I don't want to create a museum piece. I just oh, exactly. Want to have fun, you know exactly. So yeah, that inspired me to to try that, and um, and then uh, you know give it give it a shot this year. Just try some, you know. Yeah. So there's anyway. there is a definite uh, 
penchant, I guess you might say, for a lot of viewers, at least ones that, that leave comments on my channel, to always feel like they need to work towards a finished piece. You know, it's like, uh, and I've even had comments say, commenters say, uh, what's the point if I'm not doing that? Well, and that's, that's fine. That may be for some people, mm -hmm. that may be the only thing, but there is, a, I mean, I can tell you from experience, there's a definite amount of frustration and sense of futility of always just going for the finished painting um you know because you're putting an excessive amount of pressure now there's all kinds of ways to take this subject and you right. know i'm not going to knock anybody that wants to to do gallery level work or something that's going to hang on somebody's wall or something you're going to enter into a show that's that's what a lot of fine artists do fine great um but feeling like that is always a necessity uh is a motivation killer for me i don't know about you know other people and, and you know that just says to me enter the sketchbook you know a, a sketchbook can kind of take those ideas and kind of cook them a little bit could kind of leave you with a journal of ideas that you can look back on they can increase your skills. And then when you do those finished pieces, they get better. They get a lot better. Yeah, I I, I would see that as uh, the times when I've really had to, 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 to push myself to do a finished work, like a portrait of someone or a pet or their house or some landscape that somebody wanted. It's very particular to the person's desires, you know, what they want to see. And it's hard uh it's hard that kind of pressure is enormously debilitating for me like i uh i don't know what to say about that other than i really respect the people that can can do it <laughs> um and i but i can say this i got so much better in the thousands of little minute indiscriminate who cares sketches yes. than i ever did trying to yes. execute a precision you know painting i mean i those skills helped me do that painting better but the painting itself didn't help me do another painting just like it better. You know what I That's mean? That's right. Uh, yeah. I oh, do know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and, uh, and I think that's, that's the thing. And again, I, I want to stress, you know, it's, it's whatever really excites you and, you know, motivates yeah. you to work. If, if that's doing a finished piece for somebody, you know, as a commission or, or as a show entry or, to make prints from that's great uh, i say do that uh it's it doesn't hold a whole lot of uh joy for me anymore because i guess i spent so many years you know fulfilling requests of finished art you know yes. and it had to be most cases perfect right um in order for me to get paid so it I'm has just, to look like the thing that you're that is. Yeah. yeah and it has to meet the parameters that the client set for you so i'm kind of over all of that uh, not to say <laughs> that not to say that i wouldn't love to do some pieces that i'd make prints of or enter into a show i would right um but i'm so much more enjoying the art of sketchbooking um i think it's it's been fascinating um <clears throat> i keep bringing it up but you know james gurney uh, even way before we made that episode just kind of opened my eyes to a lot of that. Yes. And I mean, I'll, I'll tell you one of the things that sparked uh, my imagination and really got me excited about that were all the, the art of books that started coming out, oh, you know, like the art of Star Wars or the art of uh, most of them centered around movies. Those are essentially, those guys. Yeah, yeah, those are essentially yeah. published sketchbooks. Sketchbooks, right. From concept yeah. artists. Yeah, that's right. And it's like, wow, this stuff is great. <laughs> uh, it's you beautiful know? work. I I love. Uh, is his name Frank McQuarrie? Is that the guy who did the? Yeah, Star Wars? Ralph. Yeah, Ralph, Ralph McQuarrie. Ralph McQuarrie. He's great. And then uh, you know, like the modern day guy would be like Greg Manchus. He does a lot of that. Gregory Manchus. Yeah. Very, Ian McCaig. Very, Ian, Ian McCaig has done a lot. 
And there's those some are, other great ones. Doug Chang. I love those guys. I, yeah. You know, Steve reminds me of the the great illustrators of the 40s and 50s, you know, the, the pinup artists and the Coca-Cola advertising guys. And, yeah. you know, there's there's so many great uh, illustrators that could, they were just extraordinary oil painters like Vargas, you know, like, he, he, I don't even know if people know who Vargas was, but he used to, you know, do like these great pinup paintings for Playboy. And oh, yeah, I, I remember. A, a great, uh, Vargas was great. And, you know, all of these guys that, that came up doing that kind of um, very, I won't call it stylized, but very a good illustration, high quality sort of, yeah, the illustration you look at and you go, man, everything in that thing is right. Plus it has, you know, it has mm -hmm. soul. Added. Mm -hmm. The book covers, the pulp, you know, fiction from you. Yeah. You grew up in the same era. So, you know, you know, popular science had illustrations on it. It wasn't. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a picture or a photograph. It was a but, painting. You know? uh, but what got me just as excited was when they would come out with anthology type books of those people's work. Right. The little sketches down in the margins and yes. and showing where how they got to there. And that's I was it. like, that's as exciting to me as this. No, you know? you're right. That's a treasure. And uh, I have a good friend of mine named... Uh, uh, Stuart Lockridge, I've shared him with you before. He's a great artist, and he he's someone who's very disciplined and and follows the tradition of great you know process and painters. Like he does a sketch, and then he yeah. does you know he'll do a watercolor study, and then he'll do like a an etching, you know, and maybe an oil painting, you know, whatever. Um, but his work, like, oh, I'll go over to his studio, and we'll just be hanging out, um, and I'll he'll say what 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 do you what interests you in the in the collection here do you, you want to are you interested in buying any of my work because i always buy his stuff you know and uh funny enough i his oil paintings are brilliant but i'm always like can i see what you messed up can i see the process <laughs> sketch can i see your file of dud drawings that you don't you know because that's the stuff i want i want to mm -hmm. see the process the work the way the car was you know thought of you know whatever it was you know whatever he's the way this landscape played out in his mind and the process and he's he's always he, i think he's fascinated by the fact that i'm fascinated by this yeah stuff. sure Marty, but but here's a finished piece that's a you know this i'm really proud of this oil painting you know it's brilliant Stuart, but i want the junky drawing you threw in a drawer that you don't you know that yeah. you don't like so over the yeah. years i've just amassed a huge collection of Stuart's junk I call this the Lockridge Ad. You know, if he's ever looking for his yeah. uh, old work, he can come over to my house and get it because I'd I'd much rather have that. You know, yeah. I, I like the oil paintings; they're great, and he does really good work. But he commissions, you know, oil paintings for huge clients that want yeah. you know a twenty thousand dollar oil painting. I'm like, I'm I'm okay just uh, you know looking at that. Right. I want I want the I want the process, man. I want sure. to see how you ground it out. You know. So, but uh, I, I think you'd appreciate that too. Someday when yeah. we get out here, we'll have to get, we got to do the whole yeah. tour, wet paint, Stewart studio, we'll go a few other places, you know, hang out. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But, well, uh, let's uh, let's move this along a little, uh, Marty, maybe two. to, uh, pardon? <laughs> it's going to be a part two. If we yeah, don't that's get... right. Uh, let's talk about what you're using, what I'm using. Um, yeah. Sure. I've seen some great stuff from you and I knew you got pretty inspired by, uh, using casing and maybe toning your background. Talk about what you've been experimenting with uh, recently uh, with sure. sketchbooks. Your sketchbooks that you're liking uh, and using, yeah. anything like that. Well, first of all, you know, you go, you look at James Gurney's work and you say, well, what sketchbook is he using? Because whatever <laughs> right. he's using, I want to try that. But <laughs> I had a, um, yeah, and here's some casein paint I've been using, you know, because he uses casein, which is basically... Uh, milk paint that right. in the olden days was called milk paint, but it dries and when it dries, uh, it, um, when it dries, you don't have to, it won't lift. And if you let okay. it dry for a couple of days, it stays down. Unlike, you know, like, uh, yeah, if you painted a watercolor, uh, underpainting, you, you'd have to go very fast and light and you can't, yeah. paint over with glazing um, becomes, yeah. you know, unlike this, wash. Yeah. This, also. 
yeah, gouache as well, we'll do that. But that stuff, that's great. And I just want to give a plug to a really, a really good friend of mine. He has the initials SM. <laughs> he sent me this book. Oh, yeah. And I tell you what, this is one of my most treasured possessions. So I haven't cracked the the shrink wrap on it that's, yet. That's the original, uh, that's the original um, Kickstarter right there. This is Erwin Lee's like, yeah, this is his thing, right? That's before but, Etcher started producing them. Yeah. Right. So what I've been doing is that I just I just buy the Etcher sketchbooks and I use the Etcher sketchbooks. Yeah. Because they're they're great and um, you know they they got the same DNA, right? So I filled this. They one do, up, and he's know, overseeing the process to a degree. So. So this is full of little paintings that you know I took from you know Gurney and um you know as reference and i love this sketchbook it's been it's been like a friend for the pandemic and i finished it and did a video on it but yeah i got a bigger one it's a larger format that i'm going to use too but i want to show you what james gurney is using because in case you want to you know anybody wants to know there. so he uses he uses a couple of different types and i've got this sorry steve i got a basket full of no sketches. please uh, this is what i, I want to see he's got these he uses these field artist sketchbooks. You know, it's kind of got a smooth cover. Yeah. And I don't know if it's it's a cellulose uh, paper, but he also uses this one. This is a Pentelic Aqua, I think. Yeah, yeah. Aqua yeah, Journal. I, uh, as 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 pulp journals go, they're not that bad. Well, yeah. you know, he uses mostly gouache, so. Yeah, so it he almost doesn't, doesn't really matter paint, right? what he paints on. Yeah, he doesn't care. And then I don't. Okay, the, the, a couple of these here are, are ones I had, but these are the uh, these are moleskins, you know. Yeah. They're, you know they're okay, uh, but 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 the sketchbook I like the most lately is this. You know, it's the it's the Irwin Lee and you know the uh, yeah. The big, it's the Etcher sketchbook, hundred percent cotton paper. Here's one of the paper. newest ones right here. Uh, oh. Sure. They're they're putting out a, a limited si signature, uh, the signature series. They're doing a limited uh, production of them every year, and this okay. is this year's. They added this. This is the hot press. So they had this and the cold press version, which looks very much like yours, but you know it's produced by Etcher. Like, is that cover smooth or is it? It's uh, it's smooth. Yeah. It's okay. uh, I don't know. It's it may not be may not be leather anymore. I know Irwin Leans were was originally a leather cover, but um, it is the the hand torn Fabriano yeah. Artistico paper. Uh, so but percent cotton. It's right? a hundred and uh, well, it's three hundred GSM. I think that's one forty pound, roughly. Yeah, but a hundred percent cotton paper. A hundred percent cotton. Uh, really, all the sketchbooks Etcher is doing is 100% cotton, which Hard to uh, my hat's off to them for that. That's just amazing. And more of but them are starting to do that now. There's more. They, they are more and more coming out. Um, but this is the first 100% cotton. I got to get that. hot press that I've seen. Hot press. They only do this once a year, a limited supply. Uh, right. The other ones, like people, the one you for showed. people that don't know, Steve, we should say, and that's the one I have. We should say, uh, hot press is smooth, and cold press is yes. rough. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. these are are unlimited stock, or they, you know, those other ones are limited edition. Yeah, that's the one I got, Steve. I love that one. It's yeah, it's, they're great. Can you they're see great. yourself in the reflection off the? Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, it's uh, this is another one that start just started, uh, and it's about time for a name like Strathmore, Strathmore. Yes, to start doing the cotton sketchbooks. I'm gonna have to try that too. Now, yeah. remember the only ones you could find were these Winsor and Newton ones, right? Yeah, yeah. They were basically the only one. Then Irwin Leon did his sketchbook, and that just that just took off because artists really want to have nice paper to yeah. to them and do in their sketchbooks because i think a lot of them think of that the, the sketchbook work as you know something you can pass on maybe for a generation or two right you know, right and be around i don't know what my 
my wife often looks at my stacks of sketchbooks and goes, what am I going to do with that crap? You know, you well, and <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and again, it depends on what you paint with, you know, a cotton is not so important if you paint a lot with gouache, right. um, watercolor, if you do a lot of wet watercolor, it just, uh, it makes more techniques possible. It's not right. that it's not possible to paint on cellulose. It absolutely is. I, I have a number of sketchbooks that I, started but i just prefer cotton it, it's funny because i've seen some some discussions about that and it's like uh, the comment that's made often is uh well uh the ability the art is in the artist not in the paper right it's like it's not the tool is not you know the art is not in the tool it's in the artist well that's true except that i've never seen a professional wood carver use a dull knife. That's right. that's my comeback when every yeah. time I hear that comment. Well, that's absolutely right. So it's just yeah, it's no, just right. preference. It's preference, and a good a good artist can use cellulose just as well as cotton. And I'm not going to get into that rant again. But I'm just <laughs> you, like you know, like you and I yeah. both. We we're glad to see that there've been so many demands for it that these companies are are starting to finally make you know. It, yeah. Oh, yeah, finally make them. Now, I'll tell you, Steve, like I filled at least maybe a dozen, two dozen of these uh, super deluxe B paper sketchbooks. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just. Uh, Those are great for line and wash, aren't they? They are great. That's exactly yeah. what's in here is line and wash. Yeah. You know, and I'll just, uh, you know, you can just throw down a simple sketch really uh uh, you know, nice. easy, and then it, it takes a wash pretty nice. You know, I've even done some glazing, yeah, yep. a little bit of uh, multi-layered washes. But you know, I just don't like. I just tape something into the sketchbook once, Steve. It just doesn't matter, you know. It's it doesn't. Only, you draw something on it. Like I had this graph paper, and I said, "Well, I like that uh, pine tree. I'm going to put it in the sketchbook." And I just put it in there, and you can do it. There's no laws. There's no sketchbook laws. That's right. It's crazy. It's yeah. just. Uh, Amazing what you can do. Um, let me talk a minute about new stuff. This was an interesting addition. I think it came out this year. Maybe it was late last year. The Hanamula yeah. toned Very watercolor nice. paper. Yes. I love that paper. Um, it is Look cellulose, but uh, it, the fact that it's toned in watercolor paper yes. is, is really pretty neat i think um, well and aren't they great at uh they're great at sizing their paper and they've been making it for 500 years yeah they're as old they're like the german, german version of arches they harsh, are and they know, you know they know paper man so you it's cannot... a great gouache this is a watercolor gouache oh look uh, at that that's combo great. but uh i felt like that's amazing i love yeah. your distant trees yeah that's, um, that's perfect you can go from like these are just studies. I can't brilliant. see what I'm not. I can't see what I'm seeing. But great again for line and wash, <laughs> and then adding a little bit of white in there because they're toned. Sure, sure. That was a that was a great uh, addition to you know new product to 2020. I can't remember. It might have come out late it. 2019. The so. people at Hanmule are great too. They listen to the artists. And they really try to take in, um, they're not snobby. And you yeah. know, you've dealt with art companies that can be sort of snobby about their stuff. Yeah. Well, we're not going to change because that's the way we've been doing it for 100 years. If, but I love right. companies that embrace something different. And every time I'm in wet paint, Steve, I just grab whatever they have out. It might just be, I think this is, this is one of these like technical books made I, let me see who it's made by, but um, man, I can't read because I'm old, Steve. But uh, let me look at the light. Flex book, made in France, right? It's just okay. basically one of the, uh, you know, it's it's flexible. You can bend. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like a technical book, and uh, you know, some people like you can't do watercolor in that. That 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 that's like a, a seventy pound paper. I say. <laughs> Don't tell us what we can do. We can we can it all <laughs> yeah. day long in these books. Yeah. You know? so, so anyway, we you know give it a try, and um, you know like I sample, you know like you do, I'll sample paint on the on the paper, and you know just see where it takes you. 
But I, but, but I love trying new stuff, Steve. How, I, we, we don't discover unless we journey into, into that territory. Look at this, one, one thing, Steve. You'll, you won't find this in a store. This is, this is Stuart Lockridge's dad produces a limited number of sketchbooks from his paper every year. His name is Leon. Look oh, at wow. the, look at the uh, marbling, marbling front piece, right? Yeah. And then it's just full of the, like, uh, this is another sketchbook toned, right? Really nice. He just puts a little bit of this tape as a binder yep, on, the, yep. on the back side and just does a little watercolor on the front of it. And that's uh, awesome. You know, Stuart gave me this as a gift, and I, 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 I treasure this thing, man, because it's That's like, cool. where else are you going to get it, Steve? I know, sketchbook yeah. as an art form, right? Yeah, Here we go again. Right, exactly. So yeah. anyway, I uh, have well, you here's, uh, film and this burn. Is, you use go ahead. These, yeah, use them. Okay, what do you got there? No, this is my everyday. Oh, cancer. Yeah. This is my doodle book. And I, I recommend everybody Let's see, have I want a doodle to see book. inside that thing. Like if I came well, to your house, not, just, a lot of stuff in here is like not any good. It, it's, it's just anything from trying different pens trying out to pen. actually a more finished piece. Sure. Look at that. Oh, um, I like it. Uh, this is the book that's, that's really over. not meant to show. It's just, it's, it may be practice. Yeah. Right. Um, it may be that. it may be trying different thing here. I was trying sketching with uh, a marker. Yes. Um, it it may be just. I mean, ugly stuff. You know, you don't want anybody to see. It's like no, I have those books. Ballpoint pen. Oh, that's great. Just look at the, the simple. Look at the hatching just, behind the trees, though. That's really good. That's. It's very, good. very simple. Uh, it, there may be colored pencil. Like I, I got a. Uh, I was working out. You know what? Do, what do you do with a palm tree? Mm, sure. uh, that's just pencil. Um, I mean, I was I was doing a study on the proportion of birds, and that ended up being <laughs> like a a Patreon video. I love that. Now, do you, when you're sketching in that book, that's like your your real math scratch pad, you know? Yeah, this is like, I, I don't worry about what ends up in this book. I mean, here's a perfect example, this page. Uh, everything from a pirate head to a bird to a fist. To, right. <laughs> uh, I, I think what I was doing here was playing around, well, this is ballpoint pen, or this is a fountain pen. Right. Uh, a lot of times it's just testing a pen. Um, you know, you got to have those kind of books. You got to have the kind of book that's that's like I don't care what ends up here, but I'm doing this, you know, for a purpose. You know, here I was sketching from a comic book. Um, oh sure, yeah, I'll quick that. stuff. You know, lo loving a, a hand pose there and wanting to copy it. So when you see something like that, Steve, that like you come across, like you, you find a comic book and, and whatnot, or you see an illustration online and you think you're, it just grabs you and you think to yourself, I, I want to try that. I want to try to do that. And that's yes. where you, that's when you just go in that book, that Canson you have. Right. You just kind of throw it down. Yeah. That's, that You got to have that book. Here every is artist my, should have a book like that. Every, every artist should. That's the point. And it's a doodle book. It's a book that, uh, and and my my recommendation is don't buy a fancy book no. um, because you won't put anything in it unless you think it needs to be perfect. That's it just I mean. needs to be the most basic sketchbook that you find that's maybe even on sale, you know. And uh, oh. this this is the newest thing that I'm I'm trying. Um, this is sketching with watercolor, and all I'm using yeah. is. Uh, a water pen with a fine right. point and okay. I'm using it just like a pencil or a marker. Okay. I and, see. and it, it paints pretty dry. So even though it's watercolor, it doesn't buckle the paper. And mm -hmm. as you, as you add, I, I just mix up a light gray or maybe a sepia or something. Sure. And as you add more paint in areas, it just gets darker. It's just sort of like refining your, Okay. Your line with a pencil. Very nice. This is uh, hopefully I'm going to do a video on this, but I've been doing this a lot. 
lately oh, and just really enjoying it. It's like, Look at that. Uh, it, I, I enjoy it a lot more than with pencil. And this is all, uh, maybe I went back on top of this with pencil, but Drawing. these right here, these are all drawings, drawings with, with watercolor water. yeah. and a fine point water brush. Yeah. Just as if, just That's as brilliant. if you were using a pencil. Do you not find that a little, I, I think, I, I don't want to uh, say anything wrong about that, but I, I think I would, uh, uh, like, I can work fast with a pencil. Do you find it tedious at all or that you have to slow down or have you gotten uh, faster? Um, I, yeah, it, what I find uh, about pencil is that um, I'm tempted to erase a little bit much and it doesn't build up. It builds up messily compared okay. to this. Uh, okay. I don't know. Uh, this, I, yeah. I, I did some sketching with like a very, very, very light watercolor marker. Sure. And that kind of kind of led me to this because I thought when you keep going over it, it builds up and builds up. Um, right. And eventually when you get the darker lines out on top, you're not really paying attention to the lighter lines. So, right. But there's a tonal value there, though, that makes it. Yes, there is. OK. OK. Oh, so I'm just it, it's just another thing, you know, I'm experimenting sure. with that. I found Are you getting faster fun. at it, though. Are you getting better at it? Do you think? Yeah, or? OK, I, think so. I mean, the drawings look 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 great, but you have to consider time and effort. So if it takes you two days to get render one face, then you're like, well, I've learned something from that, but that might be more effort than right. Than right. I want to spend on. It. I, yeah. I find it faster than pencil myself, but ah, that's because okay. I tend pencil as you build it up it gets so messy, and I tend. I guess it goes back to my illustration days and my technical te technical bent. You know, I tend to want to go in there and erase and refine and erase and refine. For some reason, I know. I can't do that with the watercolor. So okay. I just leave it and it, it makes me a little more thoughtful and purposeful with each stroke. It's not going to be how I do all my sketching. You know, I like, I've really been enjoying using ballpoint pen. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's like a dark pencil. Out there. Yeah. yeah, there's there's some great ballpoint pen artists out there. I, you know, I mean, a lot, there's a few that come to mind, but there's one guy that just fills a little sketchbooks with the most brilliant ballpoint pen cross hatching you know faces i mean peter draws does a lot of stuff with uh love his stuff pens. Yeah. yeah he's great hey uh, one one thing i did want to ask you about steve or i'm going to share with the viewers too is that like what do you do when you get a sketchbook it's a nice one you open it up and and you do like, like three really good high quality paintings in that sketchbook and now you have to fill 178 more pages. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to mess up the rest of the sketchbook. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm now I got another different pressure on me. Like, wow, the next painting has to be better than the one before, or, you know. And I get trapped in that sometimes. And I think to myself, yeah. I just I get just you know I want to throw up my hands and hit myself See, in the head. Yeah. Well, the first the first uh, perfect sketchbook that I have is like that um okay. it's it's one of the ones that Erwin Lean sent me to to do a review it's when it was still a kickstarter and he embossed my name on the front in gold so uh -huh. it's like That's I don't want to go in there and mess it up you know and right I I took it to Charleston but was, was when I kind of christened it and did some of the first stuff I ever did in there I don't know though. After you get maybe half a dozen pages done, and I I, I haven't done a lot in that book, but you know, you, you just treat it like any other piece of watercolor paper. Okay, at least I, I see. have. So, so those those uh, those book those uh, the sketches you did in Charleston, the videos, and then the music that you added into the video while you were taking your walk and sketching. That was some of the earliest vlogging type stuff you were doing, you know, yep. where you were out on site. And I always thought your whole channel could 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 just get a million viewers just based on that type of video, let alone all the other stuff you do. But I mean, that was 
that was a pretty extraordinary, everything you put together that, that was thoughtful in that, the, the, the narration, the music, the, the sketching and the finished work, I thought was oh, well, thank pretty, you. pretty special. Yeah, it, and it was, I, plein air was new for me. Um, I had really not done it uh, almost okay. since school. So the, well, I was that just coming... makes me feel uh, that just makes me feel more inferior. <laughs> I just that's amazing. You didn't have any of that because I've been out sketching in public for like ten years, and I still couldn't uh, manage to put together what you did that day. That was oh pretty well, good. well, thank you. Uh, but you know, it, it there was great. there's a lot to learn, and I'm still. I mean, uh, I'm still getting comfortable with it because mm. uh, you know I'm used to having spread of my studio the comfort of my studio you know stuff spread over on this table over on this table and working something out yeah the spontaneity and the the sort of mm -hmm. immediacy of doing plein air was uncomfortable and um then you add to that you know the elements uh not just the the immediacy of it and the time crunch but the the elements i remember working uh, where I was sort of leaning up against a rock in this big kind of a creek area that's near us, uh, did a video on that. And, uh, you know, pardon me, but my butt fell asleep. You know, it's right. like, I was like really uncomfortable. It's like, but I started this, I got at least to get enough in the sketchbook to come home and finish it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the hazards of, uh, of live, of life, yeah. drawing from life or painting from life, yeah. I, I've and experienced it all raining. that stuff. Yeah, so. no, wind, rain, snow, sleet, dark of night. I mean, it all, uh, I can't see too well in the dark of night, but I've been in a sketching situation where I had to use the light off my phone to finish a drawing, you know, because you don't want to lose the moment. You know what I mean? Right. And then right. I get home and I look at it and it looks exactly like you'd expect. Like some half blind dude did a drawing on a, on a piece <laughs> of napkin paper or something. But, but yeah. anyway, I... You know, you try, you try to get better at that. Sure. The elements are all part of what makes it, it sort of interesting. Before we, uh, we end, we should talk about some of the, some of the utensils we use. Yes, I, yes. I got, you know, and you know, that this is going to be old for you, but you know that I, I love the, the Fabricacell TK9400. Right, hole, right. right. It just, it holds a lead. I don't have to grind uh, you know, cedar casing, wood casing. I just, I always That's a have good one. one That's a good ones. one. And you can put different uh, hardness and softness of leads in there, right? You just yes. buy whatever you need. And, they come and I have that. I bought it after you recommended it. Yeah, and it's a pretty good one. I like the weight of it, but I almost, almost like the weight of this Karen Dosh better. It's a, it's a nice one. It's a, That's nice. It's, oh, I, I don't have much lead left in it, but it is really really fabulous and it's got the right you know it's a, a uh, it's a uh, what do you call it hexagonal so it won't yeah, roll yeah. off a tilted work surface you know right, right. Um, and so it's so, and so is the uh favorite castell but it's a little bit more rounded but anyway i like the feel of this it's a little bit more substantial in your hand and you know you won't get hand fatigue from it because it's made of a polycarbonate not a not a metal but sure it still feels good you know what it what a good pencil yeah. feels like in your hand right. or the pen yeah this is pretty good what what do you use for pencil yeah i i have some of the similar i i'm not going to go through my whole drawer because i kind of collect pencils. i collect pencils you know and so yeah, i've got right. like 50 million of them uh, i love this uh this is an odo pro mecca this is kind of new well oh, it's not yeah. that new but i like that um i've done a lot of sketching with this, this fiber castell Oh, yeah. um it's it's an odd size it's it's not as big as those uh lead holders you were showing me but it's not as fine as some of these finer mechanical but it, i keep this kind of on on the side with my paint brushes and the wide body uh helps you a little bit I with like the grip it. and stuff yeah yeah it feels great and it can advance out with a twist Let's see. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, oh, it's so like if you like a long pencil. lead, if you like to sketch with a long lead, ah. you can do that. It's a two, I think it's a two millimeter instead of a three. Might be a one. I'm not sure. sure. This is a Faber-Castell. I forget what they call it. Um, it's pretty nice. But I, I use that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the other new thing I've already showed you that 
I've been doing recently is is sketching with a water brush. Uh, right now, my, that's not a Pentel that you just held up, though, right? This was a Derwent, and uh, only because this is the finest one I happen to have. Okay, sure. Because um, it's it really is very fine. It, it, when you do this, if you want to do this, hold it back um, more towards your face. Uh, yeah, and, here, yeah, let me hold. Let me hold my hand up. If there you want to do this, um, you don't want sure. a lot of water, especially no. if you're going to do it in a regular uh, sketchbook. I mean, you're using it to draw, so you want it. You don't I'm using want it, it to, to draw. You want only out. enough, only enough to pick up your color, and uh, so it needs to paint very dry. So I don't use the thicker ones, which right. would put more water on the page. And if you're if, if you're doing it in watercolor paper, that's fine. Yeah, very good. Um, love this uh, ballpoint pen here. This is a Lamy. Yeah, Lamy. Okay. Now you really don't need to spend a lot on a ballpoint pen. There's a lot of cheap ones out there that do just as good. But I like the way this feels in my sure. in my hand. Uh, it's got again, con it's got kind of a concave on the end there. Is it? Yeah, it's got these angular. Bit? It's not oh, really. Sure. Yeah, it's got these grip points towards the front. Very nice. Yeah, um, right. You get and, it won't let your your hand won't slide down the end of it. Right. Okay. Lamy makes the uh, some good fountain pens too, like the yeah. They, so the, the Safari. This is a yes. This is a classic Safari. Love that. I show you the. Uh, um, hang on a second. So I, you know, I uh, like I have collected a, a, a small collection of these Kuiko, although I had a viewer correct me the other day and say they're. It's Kaviko, pronounced Kaviko. Kaviko, but I always just say Kueko because that's what they call them at wet paint. Anyway, uh -huh. I got this brass one, Ooh. which is nice and, and heavy and chunky, and it's pretty sweet, you know, to paint, uh, to, to to sketch and draw with. That's a yeah. cool one. But let me show you the, um, this is my, these are, these are two of my favorites from that company. I call them the, these are the Ford versus Ferrari. You know, I just named them that. They're not named that, but I, wow, they're 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 these two. One's black. That's the Ford, right? And is that like aluminum Ferrari. body. Yeah, it's aluminum body, so it's light. You unscrew them, and then you've got this nice, nice sized pen here that you can do. And yeah. and and if you use like I like the medium and broad, for some reason I just like okay. the broad. They're just great. The ink just lasts forever. I mean, I tried to run the ink out of one of them. In a in a video, and it took me like uh, 25 minutes to run the ink, and there was none, <laughs> there was none showing in the uh, little tube, you know. So there must be a lot in the reservoir. Yeah. But anyway, I love those uh, Kawikos or Kavikos, if you if you will. Yeah, they're, they're great pens. I've got a show and tell here somewhere that's kind of fun if I can find it. Uh, where did that go? Uh, here we and go. And also, they're no fun unless you use them. So you got to use right. them. That's right. That's right. Just. Oh yeah, look at uh, that. This is a these this is a group of, wow. of guys uh with a, they put together a company called Woodnotch. They make these pens from kits. This is hand so it's handmade. Uh you know, they buy the parts, of course. Uh, this is uh hand turned olive wood. Wow. And that. uh these That's guys fancy. are putting themselves through school by making these pens. Again, the, the company is called Woodnotch. Woodnotch? Uh, yeah, uh, this is write that down. Uh, it, it's just a bunch of guys making pens, uh, roughly college age kids, you know. They have a, a Instagram page. And I bought this. Uh, draws great. That's Feels great, great in the hand. Like, nice okay. balance. Okay. But yeah, I like it. I like it if you can help out somebody too while you're buying the art supplies. Yeah. You know, go to cool. My wife got me this for Christmas, Steve. She got me one of these cases, you know, for because oh. I don't really, I just throw my stuff in uh, uh, Ziploc bags. Everywhere there's Ziploc bags, you know, it's like, yeah. It's like, well, you get a fun case and this case, oh, it's got a really nice, clip and you it unrolls and you've got places for oh wow look at that yeah it's a pretty nice uh really it's uh what do they call this wax uh i don't know what the it's like a canvas uh 
like when it get, get it'll repel water. Okay. So whatever that is, but but yeah, and it's got a zipper pocket here for other stuff. You know, maybe your watercolor kit sits down. Okay. Here. And you remember we put together the one year I put together a watercolor kit for wet paint. Yes. Yes. And there was a nice case in it, but not as nice as this one. This one's really, really sweet. Very it's nice. by a company called. Is that Lockby? Lockby? Yeah, Lockby. That's a pretty really nice. Company. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I, I, I just have to. I just have to bring myself to tear this off and put some pens in here and go out and sketch when the, when the pandemic uh, yeah. when the plague is over. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Maybe yeah, today maybe. with this, maybe we've been able to encourage some people, you know, to get out their books and scrap pieces yeah. of paper and just try some I stuff. Mean, I, I love I, your squares. That, that was <laughs> great. That's a great idea. I mean, it's simple and, you know, usually just one stepping stone is all it takes to get us started, uh, to get you started on something that, you know, sure. is fun yeah. to do. And you never know what's like you were talking about earlier, like what inspires you to get in the, in the sketchbook, what makes you want to do that. And I suppose the, it's as varied by the person, as you mentioned, as it is by anything else. But uh, for me, I mean, it does, it's a way to combat uh, those you know, darker feelings or, you know, feelings of sadness or it is. loss, you know, yeah. I, I can experience a little bit, a few moments of joy, it, you know, like, uh, what, was it Picasso that said, or somebody, I don't forget, but you basically, it washes the dust off your soul, you know, right. Or, True. So if you can do that, you know, every once in a while, maybe once a week, at least, I mean, I know you have to want to do it and you have to make time to do it, but if you do it and you experience it, it's therapy in itself, you know, mm -hmm. it's art therapy. Very true. Very true. Well, well look, we're going to, we're going to wrap it flew that by. up. Yeah. It flew by, didn't it? It did, man. We <laughs> filled more time than I thought. That's usually the way it goes. What time is it? How long did we, uh, how long have we been talking? Oh, we've probably been going an hour and a half. So. Oh my goodness. Thanks everybody for watching. If you're still with us, yeah. and thank you, Marty, for for joining in. And uh, I think this is a great kickoff to 2021, which we hope is a better year. And uh, get Absolutely. out there and find your own uh, process, find your own uh, materials, and you know whatever excites you, whatever gets you want to to want. Well, if you can't out. find your own, steal somebody else's for a while. That's right. <laughs> Just get something out and doodle, you know, for heaven's sake. Get started and, and uh, put a little joy of art in your life. Yeah, that's it. And uh, that's that's basically all we're saying. So It's been good, my friend. Happy New Year to you and to all the minders. Uh, love your fans. Everybody's so encouraging. And uh, they drop by my channel once in a while to say, uh, hey, St I, I saw you mentioned on Steve's, or I, I saw you on a video with Steve, and that's how I learned about you. And I, yeah. I'm always so thankful for that as well. Yeah, make make sure you go check out Marty's channel for sure and say hello over there. Absolutely. Sounds good. All right. All right, Marty. Well, uh, uh, Happy New Year to you also. And uh, we'll see you around, and we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>